Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Seven Show. <laughs> I just like saying it that way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I'm, in, I'm weird. <laughs> I'm doing a video that I don't, a type of video that I don't often do. I'm going to do a re review video. Um, and maybe I could do a few more of these. I don't know. It might be kind of fun. We'll see how much fun this is to do. I don't know. Um, the... Uh, the Cali Audio IN5s. It's a fairly new product that came out. I was, I've been thinking about getting another set of good monitors. I, I consider my Atom A7s good monitors. I consider my JBL 4406s nice listening monitors, but not something that I would want to mix with. So I wanted to get another set that I think kind of equals my A7s, uh, something that uh, I would be comfortable mixing under and that they would translate what I'm doing well. I originally was looking at the IN8s, the Cali Audio IN8s, but um, there's, there's some reports of the amps in them are a little noisy, and so there's kind of this hiss that you're getting out of the, out of the tweeter of them. And I work with a lot of um, audio gear, and sometimes I have kind of this long audio, uh, or analog gear and with a long, analog chain of effects which is just inherently noisy and so I want to make sure that when I'm not if if the the thing that I'm recording is just sitting silent I want to be able to hear the noise that's there so I can mitigate it and if my speakers are kind of sitting there hissing I'm not going to know if it's the speakers or my signal chain so that kind of took the IN8s off the table for me and maybe in a next release they'll fix that or something I don't know I wanted the eights because I wanted a, a, a bigger woofer, but um, I figured if I was if I was getting something different, I wanted something slightly different than the the um, A sevens. But at the same time, the IN fives are a three way speaker. The others, both of the others that I have up here, are two way speakers, so. That's something different. That's different enough <laughs> to justify buying these, I guess. <laughs> um, so a problem that I have doing a review of speakers is how do I review speakers through a video? Uh, I can't really play them for you because, and I see what, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to complain a little bit. <laughs> why, why are there videos of two speakers and a microphone just a bean between the two. You can't tell. They, I listen to it. It sounds like the speakers, both of them sound like the speakers on my laptop. Here's a thousand dollar speaker and a $500 speaker. And they both sound like my laptop speakers. Like, I don't understand that. <laughs> I, you know, and the other, here, while I'm ranting, I, this is not really an unboxing. I've obviously opened them, but what's the deal with unboxing videos? <laughs> It's, it's a product in a box. There's styrofoam and packing materials. We get it. Like, I don't know. I, maybe it's just, maybe I just get off my, I'm old. Get off my lawn. I don't understand. <laughs> so um, when I unbox these, they're boxed. And when we come back, they'll be unboxed. That's my unboxing video. That's all you need to see. Um, so how, how I'm going to do this, this review is I think what I'm going to do I have, we have three speakers that we can kind of match between. We can A, B, and C between them. You're not going to hear that, but how do I visually show what they are? So I have a uh, Rumi Q Wizard set up. I've got my, my, uh, my flat microphone set up. And what I think I'm going to do is I'll just, I'll set them up all the same way. I'll set them on the little foam paddy guy, the little isolation pad. And I'll shoot uh, 20 to 20,000 hertz through the speakers. And we'll be able to look at, I'll try to make all the volumes match. So we can kind of see the response of all three kind of set up, basically set up the same uh, and receiving the same amount of signal. And that'll give us kind of a representative, okay, a visual representative of how flat, flat this is and how flat that is and how flat the other one is. And then when I say, okay, this speaker is a little bit warm, 
we can actually look and say, oh, okay, I can see why he said that because it's a little woofy right here. That makes it a little bit warmer or maybe it's a little brittle on the high end and we can see, okay, this is why it would. I think that that's maybe a good way to do it. A problem in this room is I haven't treated it yet though. Um, but I figure, you know, if a, if a speaker sounds fairly good in an untreated room, it'll sound pretty good well, it should sound brilliant once it's tuned in, in a treated space. So um, I, I think my, my atoms sound, oh, you know, they sound pretty good in here already without a bunch of stuff up. So um, yeah, that's probably going to be as close as we can get right now. And then maybe down the line, once I get this all treated, I'll put this, I'll, I'll have these up and I can give you kind of another like, after I've had them for six months, what do I think? That kind of thing. Uh, so let me, let me start this with a funny story. Uh, my local music store, it, I live in a small community, so there's not a lot of uh, need for this local music store to bring in some really high end lot and have them on the shelves and not sell. Kind of wouldn't be a, a smart idea. So I talked to them. They didn't have any of the, the IN series in. They had an LP6, I think. They had some Yamahas and some Yorkville monitors and some other things, the KRKs and whatever, kind of the common sort of, you know, middle of the road kind of thing. Um, but they didn't have any three-way speakers. So they said, yeah, we'll bring in, we'll bring in the five. We won't bring in the eight, but we'll bring in the five because we think that it's unique enough to what we've got here for sale that if you didn't buy them, someone else would. So they brought them in just for me. And uh, they didn't have their, their recording room. They have a small recording room with uh, various interfaces and that's where they have their speakers and a bunch of other stuff set up. The, the guy was in the process of kind of revamping it. So it was really sort of in a, in a taken down state. They, they couldn't just set these up and we could go with it. So we had this, like he, we unboxed them, we set them up. We plugged them into a Tascam interface and he wasn't familiar with the interface and I'm not familiar with it. A little bit of software that's up on the Mac. And uh, so he's trying to figure out how to get them mapped through. And uh, so we just, we, we joined him to a, a, we grouped him to a pair of going out through the, the main output, I think is how it was set up. And then I brought in an MP3 player with a bunch of music that I'm super familiar with and that I just really like the mix. I, I think that the mixes are good torture tests for uh, monitors. So we got it set up and I was the, in, the, in, the, in the image of the thing, of, of the interface, it looked like it had EQ and compression on the main ounce, but I poked around in the software and I couldn't figure out how to turn that off. And so I wasn't really sure if that was just an image or if that was representative of what was going on. And he, we, he, both of us looked and we couldn't figure out that answer. And I wish I knew the interface, uh, I could look it up, but that's beside the point. Anyway, we got it set up. Uh, I started playing the first couple of songs and I'm listening to it and I'm just like, I don't know about this. They, there's, there, it's lacking something. It, it felt flat. I, I couldn't put my finger on what was wrong but they just didn't sparkle to me. And of the reviews I've been seeing, um, there's, there's not a lot of reviews online, but of the reviews I'm seeing, people are just raving. They're just like, oh, these are fantastic speakers. But of the handful of, of the reviews that you see online, it's like the, the majority of them, Cali has given the speakers to the reviewer and they're giving them away and they're doing, you know, it's so you kind of wonder, is it a little spot, suspect? You know, are they really not that great? They're just kind of promoting these things, promoting the crap out of them. And the reviewers are like, hey, they gave me these speakers. How can I not love that? <laughs> they didn't actually pay for them. Um, it, in this review, I've actually paid for these speakers and I can take them back if I don't like them. So you, you should get a fairly uh, honest review, at least my opinion of these speakers, because if I don't like them, I'm taking them back. It's a... a they're not super expensive, but it's still, it's a chunk of change for these guys. Uh, so anyway, so we're, we're, I'm, I'm just like, I'm not thrilled with the way that they sounded. So he says, uh, well, why don't we just go from your MP3 player to the speakers themselves? 
makes sense. We'll just bypass the, because I'm wondering, is, is it, does it have something to do with the interface that's making these things not sound great? So we did that, we plugged it in, I played the first song and I was like, holy crap, these things sound fantastic. For We haven't tuned them, we haven't done anything to them, they world of difference. So what was, what was wrong? And he looks at, after we did that, he looks at the interface and we realizes that we, we didn't pan the left and right channels. They were both coming in. So I was playing it in mono. So that's why they sounded like, eh. <laughs> but you know, I, and I didn't know the room. I didn't know if, if there was something inherently wrong with the room and see it, it just, yeah, it was actually pretty funny. I thought, I thought that was hilarious. So I, I listened to a handful of songs. Um, and I got to one particular song and I got about you know, a minute into the song and that was it for me. I'm like, okay, I'm done. This is all I need to hear so far to, to make, to take the plunge and bring these home. And we'll get to that song in a minute. Uh, so we'll do that and we'll, we'll do the, the, the reference shots of the speakers. And then I think what I'm going to do is I have a handful of songs that I like to listen to on speakers to see how the speakers respond. I'm going to actually go through that list and I'll tell you what I like about how this thing translates or what I don't like about how this thing translates the songs. And then you'll have access, you'll have access to the songs. You can go and listen to them on your own speakers and see how do these, how do these songs translate on my own speakers? Is, is he hearing the same thing that I'm hearing on this? I, I think that that's probably the best representative way. Um, some of the other reviews I've seen, I don't know that song. I don't even know what song they're playing, so I can't even listen to it myself. Uh, okay, so let's do the, the non-unboxing video. I'll get these out. I'm going to shoot these. Uh, I'm not going to show that on video. I'll just shoot these. Well, maybe I'll do a little B-roll of it. I'll shoot these, so when we come back, we'll have the the graphs up and we'll be able to take a look at that. Okay, that test was not too difficult. Uh, went by pretty quick. My sort of semi-scientific methodology <laughs> is each each speaker between the tweeter and the woofer on on the horizontal line, they all seem to have that same spot. So that's what I set the microphone is so that it lined up uh, between the tweeter and the woofer on the face of the of the monitor. Each monitor I set 45 inches away. The from the microphone. I didn't touch or move the microphone at all. I just moved the speakers to get it in the right position. Uh, all the speakers, the output of white noise at the microphone, I set them so that they were at 78 decibels at the microphone. And actually, let me tell you about my path. So I have the, I have the laptop goes out to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 that outputs to the Behringer controlled to USB, which then goes to the speakers. Now I did do a quick test before on the, the control to USB. Uh, I tested my response of the speakers with that in the path and with that out of the path. And there was really no remarkable difference between having it there and not having it there. Uh, it, the, the slight variations were not there was nothing major there. Like I didn't, I wasn't getting like a 20 decibel drop in a particular range or something like that. Uh, it, it looked pretty smooth and it was probably the same variable. If I did the same shot, like four or five, six times, it always comes out just slightly different. And that's probably, it would, you probably wouldn't, if you, if you put it into a mix of five shots of the room through the Behringer and then you took it out 
and did five shots and you averaged the, the two, they probably would come out the same. I'm not concerned about having that in the signal path. I don't think it changes the flavor of the speaker that much, if at all. Um, I didn't touch the volume knob or anything else on the Behringer because I know that that can introduce a little bit of change. So I left that set and the only thing I did is I switched uh, from A to B. The I'm probably getting a little too technical, but just in case you want to know what my methodology is, here it is. Um, the Callies are going out through monitor select A. The Atoms were going out through monitor select A and the JBLs were going out through monitor select B. That was the only change that I made on that thing. I did have to turn the Callies down the little, uh, the volume on the back of the Callies. I had pretty much already adjusted the, the JBLs and the Atoms to have about the same output. So I had to do the Callies to line up with that. Uh, and I turned it down maybe, I don't know, it wasn't much. <laughs> Whatever it was, it wasn't much. Uh, output on this of white noise, uh, the output was, was marking at negative 13 and the input at the microphone was, was coming in at negative 33 decibels. That was consistent across the board, which I guess we would expect since I used a decibel meter to measure at the microphone at each of them. So I moved to just the laptop monitor because I want to show you what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, and, uh, I don't know how to do that with multiple monitors, so it's just the one. So, uh, let me start recording on that and we will come over to this. So the atoms are the red line, the JBLs are sort of that purplish line and the Callies are the orange line. This is with, I think one sixth smoothing, but let's change these all to one. Should we do 124? Yeah, 124. Because something really interesting happens here. You'll notice, look at this dip here at, what is that, 129 hertz. Over here we have uh, 171 hertz. And then this is about, what, 50 or so? 49.5 hertz. Those dips are the exact reason of why, and maybe this little peak, these little peaks here maybe, um, that's exactly why you do room tuning. That's not the speaker. Those dips and maybe slight peaks, that's my room. So the, the dips are some sort of cancellation going on in those frequencies. And I can, I can actually do the math on this and probably figure out where it is. So uh, 130 hertz, that waveform is going to be a certain length. And probably the front wall to the back wall is going to be that length or a, a multiple of it. But that's why you, you tune rooms is because you want it to try to avoid these dips and these cancellations and the, it, it, you have certain frequencies that overlap and they can make peaks. We'll, we'll cover all of this in my room tuning episode that I'm going to make that got pushed aside because I bought these silly things. Um, but so let's, let's ignore that because all of them are showing that same thing. Let's go back to one six smoothing and that'll give us sort of a general overview of how flat the speakers are. And if you look, they're about the same. They're, they're really, really close. Um, the, the Callies look to have a little bit more at low end, just a touch more low end than the Atom. Let's just look at the Atoms. Let's not worry about the JBLs. JBLs are, I'm sorry, the, the atoms are, don't have the low frequency response that the Callies do. And I don't know what those numbers are, but I will put them on the screen now. So this is what the atoms are rated to, to go down to, and this is what the Callies are rated to go down to. The atoms, I've already kind of tweaked the, there's three variable resistors on the back of them. I've already tweaked them to be a, a little bit more flat uh, here in this room as it sits now, just because I was toying around with them. I have not done that for the Cali. So on the high end, you see the Cali's kind of drop off, but that's, what is this? This is uh, 84 decibels and this is 
88. Is that 84? 94, I'm sorry. Small, tiny, tiny prints. Uh, so there's a little bit of drop there. Now, the back of the Cali has some dip switches that you have to adjust, or you don't have to adjust, but you can adjust. Uh, to give you a little bit more high end, there's, um, based on where the speaker is placed in the room, if it's against the wall, if it's sitting on a stand like where it is, if it's sitting on a desk over your console, and those, those will make some EQ adjustments. Now, I don't know exactly what those EQ adjustments are. So if we, if we have it, right now it's, it's set at default, which is it's sitting, I think like a meter and a half away from the room. And, that, and that's about how it is now. So that might mean that the, the base is kind of flat, but if it's sitting next to the wall and you switch it, yes, it's sitting next to the wall, then it may tune the base down a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what those settings are, but this is just default out of the box, what it looks like. And it is pretty close to the atoms. Uh, it'd be nice to see a little bit more high end out of them and I could probably tweak that, but that's not a huge drop from, well, what are we looking at? We're looking at from here. This is about my general middle range. Um, and that is, let's just say that that's a hundred and then down here, my general middle range for this higher end is, well, okay. So yeah, about 10 decibels. So we'll have to tweak that. I'm not going to for my test. So I'm just going to leave them straight out of the box and we'll listen to them. So we look at it. It's more or less flat, a little roll off on the back end, a little on the high end. Um, yeah. That's not too terribly bad. And let's look at the JBLs um, while we're here. Uh, JBLs kind of follow the same path as the Atoms. A um, little bit more of a drop off here at, uh, what is that? That's uh, 16. And then uh, all of them really kind of pick up steam here at 70, I guess, is the frequency response there. But yeah, yeah, so we could we could look at those graphs all day and they won't tell us much more than how they sound. So let's, I'm going to hook up just the Callies. I'm going to load up my music. I'm going to give it a listen. I'm not going to film any of that because why would I? Uh, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about the music and kind of what, how they sounded to me. Okay, we're back. Um, I've been sitting, having coffee, listening to music, making notes. What a, what a nice way to spend a day off. <laughs> um, so I, what I did was I, I, I have four, three, four, five, six, seven, I have eight songs that I, I commonly use when I test speakers. And we'll go through these and I'll tell you why I like those songs and how my speakers, how, how I think they did. Um, basically what I did was I, I put on a song on one speaker. I didn't A, B back and forth between the two. I put on the song, I, I listened to the song, then I switched speakers and I listened to the song again and then uh, made notes where I, I thought I should make some notes. So the, the first song, Dave Brubeck Quartet, take five. I know the recording well, I've heard it a million times. Um, when you listen to this recording on really good speakers, you really hear the room that they're in. It was recorded in what, the late fifties? So it was just like room mics and maybe like a center mic or so. I don't even know how they recorded it, but it's, it's a cool recording because it puts you in the room with the musicians. I think it's, it's really good for that. Uh, and the, there are on really good speakers, you can hear the, the string rubbing on the fretboard of the, on the bass. on some crappier speakers. You don't hear that on both of these speakers. I could hear that. Um, I thought the upright bass was a bit more pronounced on the Cali than the Atom A7s. 
it, it just I think because it has a bit more of a lower end than the Atoms, and maybe because it's a three-way speaker, uh, the the woofer isn't working as hard as it is on handling the mid range as it is on the on the atoms so maybe that's why it's a bit more pronounced um, but so in this case I would much rather listen to take five on the Callies than the atoms the the next two songs are by a band called yellow um, they did the oh yeah song uh, if, if you remember that you probably remember that because it's in a whole bunch of songs a bunch of movies and stuff so they they released an album a handful of years back called The Eye, and there's two songs on there that I really like. Um, Boris is the guy who is Boris Blank, I think his name is, and he's he's the engineer of of Yellow, and the guy's a mad genius. Like his recordings have always blown me away. Even back in the Oh Yeah days, if you listen to those albums, they're a little dated in recording style because most of his stuff is very digital so they're they're I, th I think they hold up though and his stereo placements and his effects they're all just they're he nails it every single time just amazing so on this album there's there's a song called nervous which is very kind of a techno-y sort of electronica thing but it has there's a bass sound in it that is just very robust and the Callies played that that section really well it sounded really really well it sounded really good um, again because I think the Callies have a bit more low end um, there's a song called Junior B that is just it's it's very atmospheric uh, the woman's voice gorgeous voice but there's a little bit of distortion in her voice I don't know if it's a little over compressed or they just pushed it a little bit too hard she was too close to the mic or so I don't know what it is but it's there and on really good speakers, you can really, really hear it. And I heard that more on the A7s than I did on the than the, the Cali speakers. Um, and that's why I like the A7s for mixing is because you can hear a little bit more of the problem. Now, I think once I get the Cali's dialed in and the room tuned, I think that that will be more apparent uh, on that song. I'll be able to hear just the the overdrive on the on that vocal in the particular parts probably not a problem uh, the next song and I can't say the title because of YouTube and how they the sponsored things and everything well I'll just say it, it's it's Marilyn Manson's this is the new shit if they don't like me saying that word I don't care whatever <laughs> awesome song for testing speakers because there's kind of a quiet part with a lot of different frequencies going on in the in the first half and then it kicks into full-blown distortion yelling screaming shouting and on crappy speakers that chorus section gets sort of overdriven both of these speakers handled it beautifully both sections they sounded great and it makes you just want to turn it up even louder I did make a note that uh, there was a bit more girth in the chorus on the Cali uh, ion vibes rather than the, the atom so uh, but uh, I, I mark this one as equal. I would listen to the song on either. I prefer both speakers. I don't prefer one speaker over the other. The next song is probably a little unusual for testing speakers, but it, I think it, it does really well um, in defining low end, lows and mids. And it's a, a band called Einstruzen Neubauten. Maybe Einstruzen Day Neubauten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the song called Sabrina and it's um it has a very uh the, there's sort of these tom things and a bass and his voice is very low and it's sung very very up close and personal to the mic and uh on on it comes out sounding very thin on not uh on not very good speakers and they were it, the whole thing was very well defined on the Callies. They, they sounded fine on the Atoms, but it, it just was more rounded on the Callies. Again, uh, because I think it's a three-way with a little bit lower bass response. So if, uh, this was actually one of the few that I, I said, 
I had made a note that it, if I had to listen to it on either of them, I would listen to it on the Callies. Uh, band, uh, she goes by the band name Poe. I just got an email. <laughs> uh, she goes by a band name uh, Poe. Um, sad story with her. Really just how the music industry is just really terrible. Uh, look, look her up and uh, read about how she just got screwed by the music industry. Up and coming, fantastic music really really cool stuff and then just because of contracts and record companies being bought and sold she just totally got screwed which is like right when she she's like going crazy like getting more and more popular people are loving what she's doing and just because of some company bought another company and they just kind of tossed her in the bin it was really bad uh and she's been trying to get rights back to her song i'm not gonna get into it anyway uh I, I'm a big fan of Poe. I, I like her work. Uh, it's on the album Haunted, which is a great album. Listen to it. Uh, the song is called Walk the Walk. It's a really fun song to listen to on really good monitors because there's a lot of stuff going on in it. A lot of, a lot of low ends, a lot of, a lot of high ends, a lot of this kind of good use of, of this, the stereo imagery. Um, I put an equal sign down. I had nothing to say on either of them. Uh, it, it, I would listen to that song on either of these speakers. Uh, there's a band called the Jean Lures. They were a jazz band um, in the early 2000s. And they have a song called New Speak. And it's a really cool song to listen to on, on good monitors because it's, it's, it's a drum, bass, it's a couple saxophones, and then there's like a keyboard thing going on. Uh, but it's, it's similar to the take five that on good monitors, you can kind of hear everything and where everybody is in the room. I don't know how they recorded it, but you kind of get that impression that it was a live recording, well-placed mics. Um, I, again, I, I didn't even make notes on it because I thought both speakers handled that song quite well. And then the last one is Talk Talk April 5th. Very quiet song, very moody. Uh, there's not a lot, not a lot of overlapping stuff going on, but everything is really well defined. And his voice, his his vocals are are very present in the mix. And you can hear like little bits of moisture on his lips if you have the right kind of speakers. And uh, you could hear that on both of these actually. Um, I, the only note that I made on this is uh, there was a bit more body in the vocal reverb on the Callies. That that was my only note on that. But they they both handled the song really well, and it's just a beautiful song. It just if if you can listen to that song without kind of getting emotional, then you're a robot. <laughs> Um, okay, so the big question is, since I'm not sponsored and these speakers weren't given to me and I had to pay for them, am I going to keep them? Yes. <laughs> I, I think that they're going to be a really good addition to the studio. Um, I think once I get them dialed in and once the room is dialed in, I think that they're just going to be brilliant. Um, will I prefer them over the atoms? I don't know. It'll be interesting to find out. I've, I've been very happy with the Atoms, so uh, it'll, it'll be interesting if they take the place of the Atoms and the Atoms become secondary. I, my first thought right now is that I'm going to be probably A, B, and side by side throughout the whole mix between back and forth between both of them. That's kind of my feeling right now. Um, I won't just leave it on one work on the mix and then switch over the other. I think I'll be kind of swapping back, back and forth. It'll be interesting to see how I end up, uh, where they land in the overall view of my, my studio space. But um, no noise coming out of them, uh, like I've heard about uh, the IN8s. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're super capable speakers. Um, uh, I, I don't really have any complaints on them outside of the dip switches on the back. And the, the face plates, they're, they're plastic and they kind of look like they're just sort of jammed on there. They, when you get up close and personal to them, they, they kind of look, how they're kind of assembled is a little cheap, but it doesn't change the way they sound. 
so that's okay. You know, I wouldn't mind if they were kind of dinged up, if they sounded this good for the price. If they came out of the factory with a little ding on them here and there, it's not a big deal, I guess. So I can't really knock them for that. They're, they are on the lower price, the lower price of the better price speakers, I guess is the way to put it. They're not $50. Um, but uh, I mean, maybe if they, they could do the face plates a little bit different and charge $100 more, I'd rather have the face plates stay the same. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess that wraps up my, my very first review of studio equipment. Uh, maybe I'll do more of these. It was actually kind of fun. Um, and I guess I don't have anything else to say, do I? So I guess I'll just say thanks for watching. Oh, and I will. I, I, I will do another version of this exactly the same way once everything's tuned up and tuned in and everything's ready to go because um, I'm really interested to, to see how, how, they, they, how they sound after everything's tuned in. So I want to replicate this exact test. Um, okay, so that, I guess that is officially the end of this video. Thanks for watching.